Okay. Uh, hey, everybody. Dan here, stockmarketmentor.com. And I want to, I got a really bad cold, so <clears throat> I'm not going to talk too long um, today. Uh, though I did have a long chat with Scott McGregor about crypto in today's strategy session as far as how to how to be trading these ETFs going forward. You know, you, you don't have to like crypto at all, but there are a lot of ETFs now that are being traded. And so you don't have to completely ignore the cryptocurrency asset class. You can just trade it without trading cryptocurrencies. Uh, same thing. So anyway, uh, if you're a member, you guys definitely should check that out. If you're not, um, you can join a, on a trial basis and check it out. Um, or just get information anywhere else. There's a lot of information out there. A lot of it's free. A lot of it's paid for. And I'll let you figure out what's what. So let me get to it here. Um, I was looking at Coinbase today. Now, a lot of these, a lot of these ETF um, uh, issuers, BlackRock, et cetera, et cetera, they're going to be doing their business with Coinbase in in buying and selling cryptos. And so you would think that Coinbase would be doing really, really well, but that's really not the case right now. We can see, we'll look at the weekly chart. You, you can see, I think that's a monthly, I was going to say, not many weeks. Um, you can see that this is definitely in a turnaround mode. Uh, I've, I've already drawn the stuff here. It's like left shoulder, head, right shoulder, here's the neckline. Um, I mean, this is kind of a perfect head and shoulder pattern. This is what's called a throwback where um, it breaks out and then um, uh, breaks out and then comes back to test the breakout, which was here. And then it just accelerates higher. So no question about it in this uh, chart, this is a reversal pattern. Um, and so um, definitely a reversal pattern. By the way, if you hear me kind of breaking up or wait a minute, it looks like he stopped and then he started again and all that. I'm sneezing something fierce. Uh, I got something. And so it's hampering me. So sorry about the, uh, the issue here. But <clears throat> with respect to this being a reversal, that's fine. But there are fundamental matters uh, at hand, which is crypto. And how is this going to affect Bitcoin uh, or excuse me, Coinbase? Whereas prior to this, if somebody wanted to trade crypto, they're trading crypto. And one of the biggest um, dogs on the porch here is Coinbase. That's where I have uh, my account. Uh, not that that means anything, but it's like the biggest, most trustworthy one. So suddenly they're not the only game in town. And you could say, and I've, I'll tell you, man, the, uh, the rates, the commissions for trading crypto with Coinbase it's like off the charts, just about criminal is the way it feels. Um, maybe it's not, but maybe it is not criminal, but they're just really, really high. So when you've got a huge volume producer like these ETFs and they need to be transacting, whether it's in Bitcoin or Ethereum or whatever else, they're going to have massive leverage to get these rates down <clears throat> and that will generate per trade less money for Coinbase. Now, you could say, all right, well, yeah, that's great. Well, the only reason they're going to have that leverage is because they're going to be trading a lot more. And so it's a typical deal where when you're, if you're a high frequency trader, you're going to get a lot better commission rate than somebody who's not trading high frequency for the simple reason that like, yeah, I'm making less per transaction, but I'm making it up in volume, that type thing. So in my mind, there's kind of this push and pull with respect to Coinbase. Is this, e is this advent of ETFs, is this going to be good for Coinbase or is it not going to be? <clears throat> now, Scott McGregor, who's my trusty sidekick and uh, runs Crypto Market Mentor, he has a lot more information than I do about this. So if you're a CMM member, you definitely need to check it out with him and definitely attend the Wednesday uh, live sessions. You can ask him this kind of stuff. But as I see it, I just see, oh, first of all, these Bollinger Bands, 
you look at this big fish hook here, this big downdraft and then hook around, that's a, a classic reversal of a big uptrend. So this was really a peak on Friday, the 29th. You know, this was a definite peak in this and the stock's fallen like 25% from this December high. And so this has been a really big sell-off. And so you could say, oh yeah, but it's close to the 50-day moving average. That's when I'll look to buy it. That may very well be a good trade. However, keep something in mind. Um, you're buying that stock when it hits the 50-day moving average. Um, this thing in the box here, all this stuff in the box, that's overhead supply. Okay, that is... Uh, those are shares held by people who are kind of ticked off that they bought up here and now they're losing money. And so what they're going to want to do is on any kind of a price appreciation, you will see some selling into this. And so whether or not this ultimately runs higher two, three, four months from now, that's a different story that, uh, that I couldn't answer credibly now. Somebody else will tell you, uh, exactly what it's going to do, but they're just bull spitting you. Um, nobody knows. But I know this, that if this stock rebounds off of the 50-day moving average, it is going to be tough sledding to get this up to a new high. So I would be really, really careful of jumping on the Coinbase bandwagon and looking at this as just an amazing pullback opportunity. And I want you to think about it this way. Is anything that I have said today, other than looking at the chart essentially in real time, but is anything that I have said today a surprise? Is, is, it, is there some development that the market as a whole has not been anticipating? <clears throat> I'll tell you the answer to that. No, everything that I'm saying here is known. And so when you see this kind of move higher, I think that a lot of this was this anticipation of uh, the ETFs. And then now that, uh, and they, it just actually got approved today, but everybody knew it was coming. Um, you know, you look at Gensler, what a tool that guy was, you know, sooner or later, he's going to have, they're going to have to approve him. And so uh, at some point, this thing falls. And when does it do it? Well, 29th, Friday, boom, very next trading day. In January, that's when you're getting the big volume sell-off. So people are holding this stock for tax reasons. They don't want to pay their capital gains tax until 2025, something that sounds good to me too. So anyway, what we have here is, in my view, pretty much a climax top. I think you want to stay away from Coinbase. You can say, oh, well, I'm just keeping a small position in this. Um, because I want to be able to track it. That's fine. That's fine. But just make sure you're not holding this stock because you're losing money and you don't want to be wrong. Don't hold losing positions. You can always sell them and buy them back if you want. That's what I always say. You can always buy it back, but you can't always sell something tomorrow at today's price. If you can just keep that in mind, you're never going to spar you're never going to stray too far from where you need to be. All right, I'll see you guys next time.